Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Round Hay United Reformed Church for worship on Sunday the 22nd of November. The last Sunday in the church year. This is the Sunday when many churches celebrate Christ the King. Our theme for this morning is feeling sheepish. Not the theme, that is the name of the theme. We seek God's wisdom and God's courage to do what needs to be done when we faced, face times of difficult decisions or difficult choices. We pray for courage not to shy away from our responsibilities as God's children of light. I'm here for you again in church. Thanks again to Mark and Mandy, to Lewis and to Colin for helping me here with today's live worship. We're using prayers and resources from Roots, so let us begin our worship together. We light a light in the name of the God who creates life. We light a light in the name of the Savior who loves life. We light a light in the name of the Spirit who is the fire of life. Amen. Mark will now lead us in our opening prayers. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you, people who are hungry, people who are thirsty, strangers, imprisoned, exposed, knowing that you have come to us. In our brokenness, welcome us and open up our defenses as we come to you. O Lord of many guises. Truly we say to you that we have seen the broken and have not been moved to compassion. Truly we say to you that we have heard people mourning and have not given them our time. Truly we say to you that we have witnessed oppression and have not raised our voices. Truly, we say to you that we have seen the stranger and not said a word. God, hiding in all strangers, all around us, we are truly sorry for what we have done and what we have not done. And we ask you to deepen your welcome in us so that we might deepen our welcome around us. Yours is the earth and all in it, the valleys, mountains, seas and spray, the land, the pastures, the trees and fauna. All around us, we see stories of your bounty, your exuberant goodness, your flourishing provision. You have made us to live here, nurtured by this earth and by work. We find joy in this vocation to be your people, living, working, resting, supporting. We thank you for the gifts of living and for these gifts of bounty all around us. Amen. And the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. There have been a lot of birthdays going on this week, but before that, congratulations to Pam and Jeremy, two of our members who celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary uh, this week just gone. But happy birthday this week also to Jack, who is seven, to Martha, who is five, to Nathan, who is ten, to Martha, who is five, and to James, who is seven. And it's actually James's birthday today, so happy birthday for today, James. If you've got pictures of your celebrations or anything you've been up to, then do send them to the usual address at media at standrews.cc. Colleen's going to share with us now our Bible readings for this morning from the Old Testament book of Ezekiel and the Gospel of Matthew. The first reading is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, uh, chapter 34, verses 11 to 16 followed by verses 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the people's and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, And I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord God, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Now reading from the book, uh, the Gospel uh, according to St. Matthew, uh, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people, separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? 
And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the internal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And those and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Thank you for the reading, this reading from your word. Bless it to our use and us to your service. Amen. Thank you, Colin. We're going to listen now to our hymn for this morning, God of Grace and God of Glory, which can be found in Rejoice and Sing at 344. It sings of the need for awareness of wisdom in our response to others throughout our daily living. I want to reflect this morning on the need to seek God's wisdom and the need to find courage to do what needs to be done when we face times of difficult decisions or difficult choices, to not shy away from our responsibilities. Now, both of our Bible passages today use sheep as metaphors for choosing one way or the other, but it's rarely that simple. And sadly, if you're really not into sheep metaphors, then you're out of luck with this morning's Bible passages. But if you are a fan of sheep, specifically Sean the Sheep stories, you'll know that Shirley is the laziest of the flock. To put it tactfully, 
She is much larger than any other sheep and has to be pushed around. She eats everything, even if it's not strictly edible. Having said that, her size is sometimes an advantage to the rest of the flock, as they use her as a battering ram or to shield behind. But she is mostly peaceful, although she has been known to beat up the odd fox or even the farmer's cat. But on the whole, like most characters in Shaun the Sheep, Shirley is a figure of fun. Now maybe, just maybe, there is a wise underlying message or a reminder here to all of us about keeping fit in lockdown. As an aside, I'm interested to know if any of you have found original or innovative ways to keep fit during lockdown. Maybe we have a budding Joe Wicks among us. Why not send your pictures of whatever you do to keep fit to the usual address at media at standrews.cc. But moving on from Shirley the sheep, however, in today's Old Testament reading, overweight sheep are definitely not seen as something to laugh about. Ezekiel chapter 34, which Colin read to us today, paints a picture of the greatness of God shown in God's capacity to find, to protect, to provide for, and to guide God's people. God is the alternative shepherd illustrated here. The alternative shepherd for the flock, which of course is the people. One who is conscientious and compassionate, who will gather those who have been scattered and who will then feed them. This is in contrast to those who set themselves up as leaders. Of course, leaders were often shown to be or spoken of as shepherds. God is in contrast to these leaders who use their power unfairly. These, as we heard in the reading, are the fat sheep who will be put on a diet of justice which sounds, to be honest, much more serious than a low-calorie food supplement. But we might be more familiar with the term fat cats rather than fat sheep. But Ezekiel is clearly condemning their behavior. He is watching those in power get richer and richer while the powerless get poorer and poorer. And sadly... The gap between rich and poor in the world today has never been greater, especially as we see people exploiting our current situation. In this week's gospel passage, we read how the Son of Man, when he comes in glory, will separate the people, one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Now don't forget, as we listen to this, that sheep and goats were very difficult to tell apart in those days. In other words, the sheep all looked much more like goats and not the kind of sheep we're used to like Sean or Shirley. Yet one of the interesting features of that parable is that before the people are judged, before they're judged for their actions, they are separated. The act of separating itself in verse 32 feels like a frighteningly divisive thing. Some might refer to it in harvest terms like a winnowing, an event that distinguishes and separates one from the other. This, though, is an illustrative story about compassionate behavior. And we should be careful as we listen to it, how we compare it to divisive situations in the world today, such as what we're seeing in the United States. Here, in what the king says to those on either side, is that separation 
is made on the basis of what people did, not what they believed. Neither the sheep nor the goats recognized the king at all when they uh, were doing whatever they were doing or not doing whatever they were supposed to be doing. The acts of kindness and compassion. What counts here? What counts here is when it comes to separating. It's not the capacity to discern Jesus in the person in need, but their willingness to act that matters. So how much of the act done to the hungry or the thirsty person must be a conscious act done to or for Jesus? How much of it might be an instinctive action that we do in response to need, however and whenever we find it? When the king in the story seems to praise, it is the instinctive response to human need and not the act done or not done, on the basis of whether the person is deserving or not, nor even whether they were doing it consciously as their Christian duty. What matters, what matters is their openness to respond compassionately to human need. Unlike today's gospel reading, which clearly delineates between those who did the right thing, the sheep, And those who did not, labelled as the goats, humans tend to use more random and often unhelpful standards for division, such as ethnicity or religion or class or politics. And there is often a clear element of scapegoating, no pun intended, linked to our divisions. People and groups are singled out and blamed for their activities and their behaviours. We even see this as some try to blame others for the whole uh, COVID-19 thing. And this process of blaming, of course, inevitably leads to someone suffering. So, what can we see from today's reading? That Jesus Christ is great and the only judge. A king. A king with integrity and wisdom to know who is truly good and who is not. We also know that he is compassionate and has passion to see real unity between God and all those created in his image. Christ's kingdom clearly has a different system of values to that of our world which is presumably what attracts us to this Christ the King because he encourages us to look for the light, for the good in people and in the world. As our Advent course of reflections for the Leeds United Reformed Churches, Candles in the Dark, continue this week, we're reminded of those moments in our lives when we struggle with making difficult decisions, seeking light in the face of darkness, seeking to disperse the gloom in this corona-darkened year. Advent comes at a time of the year when the nights are longest. The darkness lasts much longer. It is, though, about the coming of the Christ King, the light of the world, who comes to us, transforming our darkest days by his presence. It's a special season of candle lighting, and this year we are using reflections from David Adam to ponder traditional Advent characters, Mary, the shepherds, the Magi, those whose faith shone out like candles in the dark. And of course, you are invited to join in online for the four remaining sessions during Advent and the one during Christmas and Epiphany. Each session is run on a Tuesday morning, then repeated on Wednesday afternoons and Thursday evenings. So if you can't make one, simply join in 
on another day. But Jesus' story of the sheep and the goats has inspired practical engagement with social need down throughout the centuries. So what practical engagement with social need have you got planned as we begin Advent this year? Well, next week, we will hear about our Christmas appeal and our four charities for this year. But if you remember back to last week, I reflected on how we were called to be children of light, of the need to be aware of the darkness in this world, the places, the issues, the people in need. How do we see God's light in these places or these situations? How do we see God's love and God's hope? As Advent symbolizes the beginning of a new Christian year, I encourage you to seek awareness and wisdom this week as you think and pray how light might be shared in this world this Advent and how you might be a part of sharing that light as a follower of Christ, the King of light. Amen. Mark will now lead us in our prayers for the world and its people. Let us pray. Think of someone who is frightened, someone whose world has come crashing down, someone who is concerned for their own health or the health of someone they love, someone facing a time of illness and afraid to share their fears that are bottled inside. Think of someone who is hurting inside. Someone whose pain simply won't go away. Someone who feels rejected, unwanted or unloved. Someone who longs to know compassion, hope and peace, but has no one to offer it to them. Think of someone who is challenged, someone who is increasingly aware that all is not well in their lives, someone whose wrong attitudes, mistaken values or hurtful words are the cause of despair and disillusionment for someone they love. Think of someone who is broken, someone who set out with high hopes and great ambitions, someone who once had important plans for their future, but whose tomorrows are covered with clouds of despair. Think of someone who is happy, someone who is very much aware of all they have received from God's gracious hand, someone who overflows with thankfulness and joy, someone whose life is daily set alight with the love and presence of Christ. Think of someone whose life is being touched by God. 
Someone whose whole existence is being turned upside down. Someone experiencing for the first time in their life the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of someone who is discovering what it can mean to offer and receive forgiveness. Someone whose burden of guilt is being lifted and whose bitterness and anger are gently being washed away. Think of someone who is weighed down by their sense of responsibility. Someone whose employment has lost the joy and fulfillment it once held. Someone overwhelmed by the demands of family and friends. Someone who is burdened by the pain and the suffering they see all around them. Someone who feels helpless to respond to God's suffering world. Think of our government and the decisions they have to make daily. Think of yourself and all that you carry on within you. Think of yourself and all you must face tomorrow. Think of yourself and the promises of God to hold you, bless you and love you from now until the end of all things. Think of yourself, and in the silence, bring your personal concerns to the Lord. Lord, In your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you for joining with St. Andrews today for our Sunday morning worship. Don't forget, if you're getting frustrated at home about not getting out, then do make contact with your elder or with me. Let's close with a prayer and a blessing. God of kindness, send us out with more time for interruptions and more generosity for kindness so that we might see you beyond these walls. Amen. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Spirit go with each and every one of us this day and always. Amen.